Good morning, Soul Family. Really interesting that this particular song comes on. Ever heard it? Sleeping for the wrong team. Down, down in an earlier round. And sugar, we're going down swinging. I'll be the number one on a bullet. Load of God complex, cock it and pull it. Have you heard this song? We're going down, down in an earlier round. And sugar, we're going down swinging. I'll be your number one with a bullet. Loaded God complex, cock it and pull it. Okay. I've just had this. I was wondering if I should talk to you guys about this. And uh, I'm gonna, because the song came on. I mean, I know sometimes the song comes on just to give me confirmation that yes, what I'm getting is correct. And I'm gonna try and figure out how to give you guys this story without, um, without naming people. I mean, I'm not gonna name people, but without, you know, causing any chaos. And if this phone gets cut off, I'll know that I'm not to do it. So here we're going to do, these are the four messengers, <laughs> the four things you're going to choose from. They're all fridge magnets that I have. This is my mom's. Creativity. This was my mom's too. The hummingbird. You will accomplish what might seem impossible to yourself and others. This was my mom's too. No, I got this in Wisconsin. I got this in Wisconsin. I think I got a few of them. I got it at um, Feed the People. Feed my people at this, my favorite thrift store there. <laughs> um, ceramic heart. No, you know what? I didn't get it in Wisconsin. I got it in Sedona at my favorite thrift store. The Goodwill, my favorite Goodwill. So it's a ceramic heart. And Harmony, that beautiful little town that I dreamed about. My dreams, I saw that carved wooden door and, and uh, before I went on my quest up to Big Sur. And when I got to this little, I drove past uh, on the freeway and I saw that, right? Population 18. I thought, okay, that's my favorite word and I need to go there. And there I found the carved door. Pretty cool. So there's your, um, and since that's so special to me, that's going to be Aries. So that's fire. Um, we'll do fire, water, air, earth. Fire, water, air, earth. Okay, let's do this. So then, let's do this in proper order. It'll be water, air, earth, fire. <laughs> water, air, earth, fire. Okay, I'm putting that up. Now, you can choose whatever you want, whatever you're drawn to. And while I get us ready, I'm going to, um, I'm going to tell you my story. And this is an example of how life imitates life. And I don't know, I'm gonna try, my phone needs to be charged and um, I've got no battery right now. So I'm going to attempt to do this while this is, mm, I was gonna try and um, have this sit here while it charged my phone. Um, oh wow, I can do it. That's shocking. If it falls and we get disconnected, I'll know I'm not supposed to tell my story. So here's the deal. Once upon a time, I would go to a place. I, it was I, went, I would go to this town that I, I, I didn't live there. It was, um, um, and other people would go. We would all kind of, uh, it's kind of like a holiday resort, right? And uh, so there was this person that, that, I, would, that I met there, at, and we became friends. He was a really great guy, super awesome guy. We got along great. He was funny. He, he liked him. But... I was actually in love with someone else and it just wasn't going anywhere. The person was blowing me off. It just wasn't going anywhere. And so anyway, like I said, it was a holiday resort. It wasn't with somewhere that we lived. None of us, we all would go to this holiday resort. So one time I, I, I you know, we get there and uh, you know, nothing's happening between me and this other person. And, and this guy knew that I liked somebody else, right? Um, but we, like I said, we were friends and we got along really great. We had great chemistry. And, uh, I didn't know anything about his life because he didn't live there either and uh, I thought he had a girlfriend and you know and uh, he started one night we, we we kind of got I think we were drinking I can't remember we were all having fun and um, we got kind of friendly and I asked him about the girl and don't you have a girlfriend and he's like no you know we we're not together you know we've got problems and I'm like oh okay so they weren't together they broke up because I don't, I don't mess around with other people's people, right? That would be not something I would never do. So we start, you know, talking and laughing. We end up kissing, and it starts kind of getting a little bit heavy, and I stop because I'm so stinking loyal in my head that even though I'm not with this other person that I like, I like them. 
a lot, right? So I just can't allow myself to go any further. So it gets understood. And um, a lot of time goes by. I mean, I hold on for way too long to people, right? Like years. So it had been quite a while. I think it was like the next, I don't even know if it was the next summer. It might have been the summer after that, that we get, uh, I see this person again. And again, you know, I, they're never with anybody. They never have, you know, a girlfriend with them. So I'm, I mean, and all honesty, I have to tell you the God's honest truth. I honestly believed when I asked this person if he was with anybody that he wasn't because he told me he wasn't. So this time we get together again. We, you know, of course, things start getting friendly and it starts getting really frisky. It starts to kind of get to a place where we almost go too far and then I just can't do it. I stop. And I'm talking to this person and I'm saying, you know, I think that, and he and he says, you know, he, he was glad that I did too because, um, that I stopped because I, I started to talk to him and I said, you know, I, I have a feeling that you actually really, really care for this person and you need to work it out. You know, you, you guys need to get together and figure it out because you're holding on to the somebody just like I'm holding on to somebody. And that means that that person is really important. So anyway, he agrees. We, we, we part friends and, and I go back to my place and I don't know, something happened. I decide to um, send, I don't normally go to other people's um, uh, Facebook pages, you know, but I did. I go to this person's Facebook page and because I was going to post something and I look and it says that this person is engaged and I lost it. I was so angry. I had no idea. And I wrote this person. I was so angry. I said, how could you do that? How could you do that? You know, oh, well, we weren't together. You were engaged. I mean, to me, I'm sorry. That crossed a line, you know? So I was really upset and uh, I didn't talk to this person for quite a while. And, and even though he, um, ended up marrying this person, he still would contact me. And I, I didn't, I didn't contact, I, I just kept it really cold, you know? And then, you know, years went by and, you know, this person's still with their person and I've still not gotten together with who I, I, I wanted. But uh, now it's to the place where it's just kind of comfortable, right? You know, it, it's not a big deal, it's over. You know, I did, we didn't actually do anything more than, you know, it didn't go too far and, but I thought to myself, you know, what if, uh, you know, people talk, people gossip, and what if that was found out? And what if people thought that I actually was with this person and did this, even though this person was engaged, even though I didn't know that, you know? So in my dream, I'm watching this person that I actually am in love with doing the exact same thing. The only difference is the person that I'm in love with knew that person was engaged. They knew it. And they have this connection. They have this bond. And the, the thing is, they're friends. They've probably been friends before. But this person's got trouble. And, you know, you think about a lot of times, you know, this is a, this is a situation. Somebody will say to you, oh, I'm going to leave them, you know. I'm, 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 you know, And you think, you hear all the bad stuff about this person. And you even see bad stuff, right? Yeah, this person's an alcoholic. They're abusive. You know, and, and you're my only friend. And I care about you. And thank you for being here. And so you've got, and, and they kind of lead you on. But in all reality, what I was watching is this person was never going to leave the person that they were with because they loved that person. They were basically using you as a side piece to fulfill whatever they weren't getting at home with their partner. Just kind of like what happened to me, but I, I wasn't aware of it. But what I've watched in my dreams, this person knows. This person actually is staying with the other people. They took this person in when they needed someplace to stay. And... The person who is uh, staying there thinks that, that he's helping, right? Because this other, this woman has been so um, abused by this person, not realizing that they're both the same. They're both the same. They both, they, that's their life, you know? So I'm, so in, in my dream last night, it was like, and I remember because the person that was in my life, I watched it happen. Mine happened years before, but, but I watched it play out in this life. And I thought, wow, there's karma. I didn't even know that this other person that I had met at the summer camp was involved with somebody, but they were, and, and it should have been, it should have been more clear to me. I should have made more certain, right? Maybe that's my karma. I should have made 100% certain that there was absolutely no connection still to his girlfriend before I did that, because I don't, I, I would, I would never do that to somebody, you know, that, that's not okay. But um, in my dream, I'm watching as this person that I cared about was approached by the other person. He didn't approach her. She approached him. 
And he asked her, what about your boyfriend or whatever? And she said, I'll get rid of him. And the person in my life said, wow, it's been a really long time. I haven't been with anybody for a really long time. It feels really good. And then they said to themselves, Sherry's not here, you know. Maybe I could get together with this person, and when Sherry comes back, I could break it off. But then he said to himself in his head, no, because Sherry would say that I made my choice. But this person kept coming on to him, right? And that's the truth. I would say that. You made your choice. You chose to go there, right? You knew this person was with somebody else, and you chose to go there. I wasn't even in a... I had no option with him in my life because he blew me off, completely walked away from me. And yet I was, I was not able to allow myself to move forward with anyone. And thank God, because the person was huh, with someone else. But isn't that interesting how life imitates life? You know how they say life imitates art? Well, this is how you have mirrors in your life. And this is what karma is. It comes back around. So anything that you're going through in your life, you look back at your life and you ask yourself, where was I in a position like this, myself, when I might have been, like you're upset because somebody did this, that, or the other, but were you in a place in your life that you did that to somebody? Because when I found out that that person had, had actually someone in their life that actually loved them, I was so angry because I never would have done that to that person. I wouldn't have. And this person was my friend, so I was conflicted because I thought, geez, you know, I cared about you. You were my friend. How could you do that? You know, how could you trick me and bring me into something like that? And then, and then I look back at it, and like I said, I look back at it, and I think to myself, what if other people knew about that, that that had happened? And they assumed that I, that I knew, and I didn't care that this person had a partner. Well, I'm here to tell you, I freaking never knew, and I would never have done it. And I'm glad that I, you know, you know there, there was my higher self stepping in and saving my ass, right? <laughs> that was my higher self, actually, my intuition saying to myself. And you know what? It wasn't that in the back of my mind, my higher self said, you know what? He's got to be with her because I honestly really didn't think he was. What stopped me was thy love from the other person in my life. I love that person. My loyalty is just so damn strong that I, I couldn't allow myself to go there, even though he wasn't in my life. And... You know, I look back at it and I think, you know, you think, well, why were you so loyal to him? He was never loyal to you, right? But you know what? Thank God that I was that loyal. And thank God I do have that in me because if I hadn't, I could have gone through, I could have slept with this guy. I could have slept with this guy. And this, and I would have been a homewrecker in my mind. I would have been a homewrecker. God, that was, that was spirit helping me, you know? I can understand how things like that happen because it happened to me too, but but I didn't go somewhere where somebody else was, where I knew somebody had a partner. So I guess the message I'm telling to you is if somebody says to you, you know, you know you're, you're aware of a situation, I've got actually a lot of clients in this situation. Oh, my wife, you know, she's this and she's done that, or my husband, he's done this and he's done that, and I'm leaving him, and I, it's, I'm only here because of the kids, and, you know, um, it's a really abusive situation, and you yourself maybe even have seen things, right? It's easy for you to believe what they're telling you. The fact of the matter is, they are with someone else. You don't go there, period. You don't go there because you are the cheater. They, they are just as bad. I mean, they're worse because they're instigating it, but no, they're not worse. You're just as bad because you knew and you went there. And it doesn't matter. Don't talk yourself into believing, you know, oh, it's a bad relationship and they're going to get out of it. No, if they were going to get out of it, they'd be out of it. I don't care if there were kids involved. If they were going to leave that situation, they would leave. They haven't left it because they have no intention of leaving it. And what you are is a side piece. And that's what I've watched in this person. This person in my life that I loved so much and that I was so loyal to. They believe that this person was going to be with them. And they never will. And uh, actually, in, in my dreams, what I ended up watching was this one that this uh, person in my life had had this fling with and probably continued on they did get married and I think that they have continued on so it uh, kind of shows me I have bad choice in men right all right that's the end of my sad tale the end of my sad tale all right just uh just know you know and I say it to my clients all the time
it's not that big of a choice. You know where you want to go. Just like when I said you flip, flip a coin, heads or tails, you know where you want to be. If you're not there, it's because you don't want to be there. And if you are sleeping with somebody who's telling you that they're leaving their wife or their husband, you're a homewrecker. And it's on you. Okay. At 15 minutes and 19 seconds in, the first message, creativity. We see the sacral chakra on the outside, color orange and the kind of yellow. So I am worthy. I'm capable of creating, of bringing creativity in my life. And we are working with, uh, what is this? This is my very first deck that I ever got. My very first deck. It's, um, what's it called? Divine guidance from your angels. Because when I first started, you know, I was coming out of a, being a Jehovah's Witness and I was terrified about working with, you know, I didn't want to have anything to do with tarot because I felt that that had to do with the occult and it scared me. So this was about angels and this was my first deck. So family, this situation is rooted in an emotional experience with a family member, which we can help you to understand and heal. In your mind and heart, surround this person, yourself, and the experience with calming blue light and many angels. Be open to the gifts within the situation and allow yourself to feel at peace. Well, here we see all different... All different nationalities. I saw that in my dreams last night. So whatever's going on, you've got family issues. Now, if this is romance, there may be a dysfunctional family. You grew up with a dysfunctional family, which is affecting the way you view relationships in the world, in your life. Um, it could be that uh, there is an issue within your family that needs to be resolved. Maybe there's fighting. Um, maybe there's, um, like I said, alcoholism. That was what was shown in my story. The person I was with, um, my friend was not an alcoholic, but the person, this, their, their partner was. So it could be that, and it needs to be healed, right? Um, it could be that there's a distance that's grown between you and a family member. And so it's, it's about working on bringing that family together. It's about, um, as, as spirit is seeing, seeing them surrounded with love and, and light. And sometimes we don't know what to say, you know, when we've had difficulties within family, but a lot of times we don't need to use the words. We can, we can literally feel that energy in our hearts and, and see that person completely surrounded. And, but it is important to say the words, you know, I love you was something that was really, really difficult to say in my family growing up because it wasn't something we heard. And it's important to say that. It might mean that you need to spend more time with your family. You haven't been spending time with your family. I was watching uh, on my Instagram this morning. I had um, people posting things and I was, I'm watching, you know, it's summertime. So people are doing things together and God, I miss having a, a family. You know, I didn't, I've never really had a family except for the seven years I was with my ex-husband. That, that was one thing that was so nice. You know, we, we, we did things. I miss that. So... Don't allow um, distance to come between your family and you because of your work or because of, you know, misunderstandings. Come together with your family when you have them. You know, you, you miss it when it's gone. And the reason I said that that song, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll digress and go back to that song, Loaded God Complex, Cock It and Pull It. That's somebody who is connecting with someone else. They're either watching somebody with another person and wanting to be with them, which is like what I was saying. You're living in the same house with this person. That's what I watched. And they're, you're, you like this person, but they have a partner. And they're, they're watching you. He, this person was, that's talking is watching, wanting to be that person with, that, with the partner. And watching from the... I'm just, a, I'm just a notch in your bedpost, but you're just a line in the song. So this person, you know, strung him along and used him as a side piece, and he knows it. But he wants to be with this person. Pretty sad, hey? But it's also about people who are connecting energetically because I can see my, I can, like I said, I can, I can connect with the person that I was watching. I watched their life. And what was I? I was just a notch in, the, in a bedpost. Just another notch, right? Well, they're just a line in my song. <laughs> That's the, and, and the loaded God complex is, you know, you think about a God complex, you think you're, you're all that in a bag of chips. I'm just a loaded God complex, cock it and pull it. Not good. Anyway, so that came up and maybe this has to do with the family issue. You know, maybe these people are like family to you. That's pretty bad. That's pretty messed up, right? There's a lot of healing that needs to take place in that situation. 
These people treated you like family. They took you in. And you're doing that to them? Not cool. So there's healing that needs to take place in that situation. Um, this is summertime, so maybe it's time to go on the holiday with your family. I've been watching people, like I said, and posting pictures, you know, and it was somebody uh, wrote to me on Instagram. They were walking along this stream. I don't know where they live, but they were finding all kinds of crystals. They were mentioning crystals that I spoke about in the readings, and I was like, wow, that's so cool, you know? And remember, I was talking about how it was fun to get together with baseball games in the summer, and even here, when I was first, when I was living in uh, Temecula, after my ex-husband and I divorced, I had a friend that um, her kid was in a baseball, um, was on a baseball team, so I would go to the baseball practice, and even just sitting in the bleachers and watching the kids play baseball, it was fun, you know, it was outside, it's fun. This message could mean that there is somebody that's going to be coming into your family, a new family member, maybe you're going to have a baby, or maybe somebody in your family is getting married. Um, it could be, like I said, that there's somebody that's a friend to you that's like family. Hell, I've got soul family. My Uncle Phil, my Mama Sherry, my Papa Terry. They're, none of them are my blood, but they are my family, right? That's my soul family. So you may have a friend that feels like family to you, you know, closer than family, closer than blood. Maybe you need to spend some time with that person. I am sure trying to get home. I've been trying for a long time. It's also about if you have issues about your family, maybe you had a really dysfunctional family and because of your family, you know, you've grown up with, you know, fear of relationships or maybe, um, like I said, you maybe you've had an abusive family. So there's a lot of healing and forgiveness that needs to take place so that you can release any patterns that, that you are repeating. Maybe you're repeating what you grew up with, you know, and you don't like it. So you need to work on releasing that and forgive yourself as well as your family members, and they may not be sorry. Sometimes you gotta forgive people that aren't sorry, you know, because you can't carry that around, and that's the whole point. So use your imagination. In family, to do things, think of fun things creatively that you can do, right? Also, imagine how you can, maybe you felt stuck in a situation. How can you use your creativity to get unstuck? Think of ways how spirit can make something work out that feels impossible. You know, we hear the message, explore your options, and often you think, oh, it's time to look some elsewhere. But it also means, how else can spirit make this work? What miracle can they pull out of a hat? What rabbit can they pull out of a hat to make this work? Explore those possibilities. Sorry, I should have done it this way, but here's your body, here's your soul. This mermaid has got a fish out of water lying next to her, and that fish doesn't look like he's breathing very well. I think of the song, my head's underwater, but I'm breathing fine. Well, this fish is not breathing fine. This fish is out of water, so uncomfortable, right? The mermaid's taking care of herself, but this fish is feeling rather uncomfortable right now. He's got a red stripe around his throat. Why? Why? Was that anger? Is that passion? Why is there a red stripe around that throat? What a, I'm thinking about trout. Don't they have... My brother used to catch rainbow trout when uh, he was a kid. I'm wondering why that red is there. But this mermaid, she's taking care of herself. Her back is turned to that fish out of water. She knows it's time to take care of herself. So practice good soul care. The quality of our outer life is always dependent on the quality of care we give to our soul. Absolutely. We've had a lot of focus on this at this time for quite a while about taking care of ourselves. And the quality of the food we ingest, the quality of the people that we're around. I would rather have one person that is decent in my life than a bunch of people around me that are toxic. So the quality of thoughts that we, we, we choose to think about, don't mull over all the negative. I, I watched that in my dream and I asked Spirit last night, you know, I've been having really crappy dreams showing me what, you know, things that I don't want to see. But I said, show me, please, the lessons that I need to learn in a more gentle way. So I watched. And I did, I watched in my dreams in a gentle way. And that is one way that we can practice self-care is by asking for that. You know, we get a lot of healing in our dreams. And sometimes the dreams are nightmares. And it's terrifying when we have to realize that these are actually, we have to look at them. It's, it's hard when you first wake up, it is for me. Um, the dream is, it's not reality. It's not happening now. And the dreams are trying to show you something. They're trying to help you heal. Well, we spoke about this the other night. If you're having issues with that, then do the 
do the situation like I do the situation. <laughs> I was thinking two things at once and it came out like that. Um, and that's a message. Somebody might be thinking two things at once and it comes out in just a mess. Before I went to bed last night, I was looking at my crystals, holding my crystals, and I said, okay, we've been doing this every night. We've been getting, you've been giving me all the answers that I've been wanting to get, but it's been pretty rough. So can we do some healing in a more gentle way? So in my dream, this is what they gave me. So there's somebody who wants to talk, but they don't know what to do. They feel like they're, they're, um, they're falling into their emotional waters. I want to turn on the air conditioning, but I, and this is in, in reality, in the middle of the dream, this person was walking along, you know, they, they drive and they crash their car, which is, you know, your cars, it's how you travel forward in life. They crash the car, so they get out and they start to walk and they fall into the ocean, which is their emotional waters. The ocean didn't feel cold to me, it felt warm. But, and I, and I climbed out, I wasn't scared, but I was like, great. So I climb out and I'm on the wrong side of where my car is. So I'm walking along and I see these people, you know, inside this place. And, I'm, and I'm, I hear them talking and I think I should ask them if they know a way for me to get back to the other side. Well, this is, you know, somebody, you know, think about it. This fish, not in their emotional waters, right? I'm on the wrong side. The water's over here. I would do well if I was in the water, but I'm on the wrong side. I wonder if somebody, spirit, can help me get back into my emotional waters so that I'm okay, right? This is funny that this, this comes up and, it, and this is my dream last night. So then I get up because my cat's talking to me. My cats do this. They wake me up so that I write my dreams down. And I'm hot. And it's dark. I go over to my air conditioner to turn it down, but I can't see anything. You know, things are hot and in the dark. I don't know how to cool things down. I have to find the light, which is my phone, to, to, to push the right button to turn on the air to cool things down. Now think about that. Things are hot, right? This fish is hot. The, the, the things are hot right now. And I need to cool things down. Right? Things are, things, there's, there's either anger or things, or maybe I'm in a situation that I should not be in. And I need to put, you know, cool things down. So I go over to my air conditioning and I can't see anything. It's black. So you don't know which way to go. Right? Same as this person that's walking along and falls into their emotional waters. I have to turn the light on. Now my phone is the light. So I pick up my phone and I turn the light on and I'm able to see their light and I turn on the air conditioning. Now you turn to your phone. Maybe there's information. Or maybe the phone is your light. Maybe you need to call somebody. Right? I needed to pick up my phone to get to the light. So you either need to call on spirit for help or you need to call somebody because we just got that there's a situation that you need to connect possibly with somebody, right? And clear something up. So um, I find that interesting that that is how my dreams, how my dreams are come into play here. So maybe that's what you need to do, right? Call upon spirit. Ask your angels to help you when you go to sleep. Tell me what I need to know. And they showed me what I needed to see. I watched it. And they showed it in a way that was, you know, it was pleasant because this person, like I said, was my friend. But it was, um, wow. It, and it caused heart hurt feelings. It really did. I was really angry. I couldn't believe it. But they were in a bad place. And they knew they shouldn't have done what they did. And like I said, they kept kind of crossing the line. Even after they were married, they kept trying to reach out to me. And I was like, nope. Peace out. Right? So that's another thing. Practice good self-care. Good soul care. You don't want to be in an environment like that. That is not good for your soul. You need to get out of that situation. You need to remove yourself. Don't keep yourself there. That is not quality. That's toxic and that's wrong. That's damaging to your soul. Shyness is a factor. Well, we know this. We've gotten this several times, haven't we? So somebody, like I said, in my dream, has something that they want to say, but they don't know what to do. And they're in hot water, possibly, and they're worried about it. So think of creative ways that this situation can be resolved. Think outside the box. Think of how spirit can arrange things. You know, maybe it's, you know, think about like what I just saw. I watched a mirror of what happened in my life and, and what happened in the persons in my life. It was the same kind of scenario. So maybe say to spirit, show them, you know, a scenario in their life where they went through something similar, you know, so that maybe it's easy. Now, shyness is a factor. Maybe, maybe you have a shyness as far as creativity. You want to do something, but you're, you're shy. You're, 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 you're not comfortable going out into an environment with other people. So call upon spirit and, and ask for help with this. There are crystals that you can use that will overcome shyness. So let me remember what they are. Hold on. Crystals to help. Let's look it up. Help. 
I, I know what they are, but for some, you know, right when, right when I, I need to pull it up, it's gone, right? Just like, just like this person in my dream, right when they needed something, they, they couldn't find it. So the, the crystals for shyness, um, what do I have here that I could show you? Lapidolite, my favorite stone of all time. I've told you guys, this is my favorite stone of all time. Lapidolite. Will over help, over help, um, help with overcoming shyness. Lupidolite has lithium in it. Lithium is what they give people to calm them. <laughs> so lipidolite, hematite. Um, where's my hematite stones? Oh, here. I've got one right next to this. How funny. This is hematite right here. Right? It's got that metallic. And it's metal. It, 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 um, it will stick to another piece of hematite. Um, malachite. So where's my malachite? I've got mal. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna show you. Cause we gotta see all this stuff. So here's malachite, right? If you wanna know what a malachite looks like, um, I was gonna show you how hematite sticks to, to each other. Oh wait, see? They're like magnets. Oops, sorry, they're like magnets. Um. Tiger's eye is another, and we do have tiger's eye right here. And I literally got a tiger's eye that looks like a tiger's eye. That's what's so cool about it. So here's tiger's eye. Um, malachite, tiger's eye, lapidolite, calcite. I know I have calcite. Where's my calcite? There's all different colors of calcite, but here's my yellow calcite. There's blue calcite as well. Um, these other cal. So these are crystals that can help you with shyness. So. Grab a good chunk of it and put it in your pocket and hold on to it. Meditate with it. When you're thinking about uh, this situation, whatever this shyness that you need to overcome is regarding, hold on to one of these crystals. I would say my favorite of all, I mean, this is very, very delicate because it's like, um, it's mica, right? This is um, muscovite mica, lipidolite, but this is the tumbled version. So you can put this in your pocket and carry it with you. So use the crystals to help you. I use the crystals all the time all the time. Whatever I'm going through, there's a crystal that'll help me. I'm into crystals. All right, so at 32 minutes in, we go to our next message, which is the hummingbird, which tells you a couple of things. One, you will accomplish what might seem impossible to yourself as well as others. It also means to lighten up, take a breath, pause, grab the sweetness in life. Life is way too short, right? So... This, de this um, is with, we're now with the uh, um, Magical Mermaids. I wanted to keep it light today. Have faith. Your prayers are manifesting. Remain positive and follow your guidance. So this message to me, when I look at this message, I see, because she's got her arms thrown back that way and she's jumping out of her emotional waters, because think about it. Well, a mermaid can live out of the water for, for a period of time. They can't live completely out of water, but they can come out of the water for a period of time. But the fact that her arms are thrown back and she's jumping out of her emotional waters, it makes me think of the fool. The fool card is always leaping. It's a leap of faith, right? This is what she's taking, a leap of faith. Her arms are back. She's looking up ahead. She's not looking in front of her. She's just going for it. So that's what Spirit's telling you. Trust us. Have faith. Your prayers are manifesting. If you remain a positive, if you hold a positive mindset, that will keep your energy up high. There will be guidance that Spirit gives you, action steps that you can take to make your dreams come true. So, you have to have faith that this is going to happen. It's like they use the same old boring thing, but it's, you know, it is what it is. Um, okay, you know, I'm going to use something different. I was going to use the seedling. You put a plant, you know, you plant a seed and then you wait for it to grow. I've just planted some, um, some what is it, uh, chia seeds. In, 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 uh, and I planted, uh, what is it, cat grass for my cat Lily because she likes to have fresh grass and it got really hot and it burned her grass. She needs it. That's another message right now. You don't need pot right now. Whoever's using pot right now to keep themselves calm, it's causing a problem for you. It's blocking your, your clear connection. It's making things foggy. Um, yes, it's calming you down, but it's not keeping you in a state of um, clarity. It's an altered reality, and you're not seeing things clearly. Spirit is showing me right now. What you need is wheat grass. What you need is that kind of grass. You don't need pot. Right now, you need to stop. You need to pull back on the pot. You need to use the crystals, and you need to use natural. And I, yes, I understand that pot is natural. I get it, and I think that it, you know, can, in small doses, it's fine. But there are people right now that are overdoing it, and it's keeping you um, numbed. 
it's keeping you dumbed down and it's and it's I'm telling you you're not going to be able to hear your messages from spirit and your higher self clearly when you're stoned that much you're, you're not period so there's a message for you right there but anyway I plant these I planted yesterday you know the cat grass it's gonna take a while you know before it comes up I can't pull it up I know that it's gonna grow because it, it, it always will same thing as a baby you got a baby in your tummy you know that baby's gonna be born your stomach's getting bigger and bigger it's happening now at first you don't see anything but there's still a baby in there right it takes a while before you start noticing it so trust that it's gonna happen and don't try and force things to happen they'll happen when they're meant to happen and 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 the the good thing is just the fact that you have put those intentions out and this is what I plan and this is what I'm having faith in those are the action steps those are the first most important action steps that you needed to take that you have taken the steps toward manifestation is this is what I want this is my desire and I have faith in that and I'm going to trust spirit to bring this forward those are huge steps so recognize that spirit is working with you because this is coming from spirit this message is have faith it's coming and if you do need help to remain faithful to, to keep your faith up ask for spirit it was no mistake that the hummingbird came forward with this card you will accomplish what might seem impossible to yourself and even to others keep it light right relax take a breath pause Go after and, and, and grab the little sweet things. It's summertime. Enjoy yourself. Keep things light and happy. Also, in order to manifest, this is about not pushing things to, you right? This is about keeping it light. Keep it happy. Um, not, keep it simple. Like I chose these cards today. I chose simple cards. I didn't want anything heavy. So that's all you need to do. Have faith. Ask Spirit for help. And then whatever they tell you to do, take those steps. Pretty simple. Keep it simple, stupid beauty mm, here's this rose again smelling that rose so focus on the beautiful things in life just like the, the hummingbird says grab the sweetness in life I have a hummingbird feeder right there whoops and I get to watch them come up all the time and I love sitting in my window here when I do my work I get to see beautiful things look how calm the water is that is a message for you right now there is not even a ripple on the water it's like glass so things are calm you can relax it is actually the weekend's over now isn't it what day is this I think it's in the week now but it's it's still summer and it's still beautiful you still can take time on your lunch break or um, you know in between projects or whatever to take a little downtime and relax and enjoy the, the beautiful things in life which are the simple things the free things stop and smell the roses surround yourself with simple pleasures. see beauty is the language of the divine it doesn't have to be complicated Hmm, what's your little message? Now is the time to focus on you. Just like I said, with our first message with this, where was it? Where was it? Did I put it away already? The mermaid, wasn't it a mermaid that was sitting? Yeah. She's not worrying about that fish out of water. He's got his own stuff he's got to deal with. She's worrying about her. She's taking care of herself. Now's the time to focus on you. Self-love, self-care, what do you want to do? What makes you happy? Right? Do the things that make you happy. That fight. Focus on the simple things. I'm focusing on, I'm going to go get myself some cherries again today. I ran out of cherries. <laughs> I'm addicted to cherries. Um, oh, P.S. My friend Amy, she gave her, her dog, Peaches, some uh, pitted cherries the other day. And then she looked it up afterwards. I didn't know this, so I'm just saying this for you guys. They're deadly to, to dogs. I didn't know that. So don't give your dogs cherries. I love cherries. That's another message. Remember the dogs are going to stay in chains? Don't give your dogs cherries. I love cherries. They're my favorite. Give them to your cat. <laughs> I don't know if they're, if they're good for cats either. You better check it out. But basically that's it. This is a simple message for you. So at 39 minutes and 8 seconds in, we go to the ceramic heart. A heart of stone. Hmm. But what I'm getting from this is this heart of stone has got healing. And there's, there's, there's warmth right here. So it could be that a heart of stone is coming to life. It could also represent that your, your, your love is rock solid. Right? It's rock solid and it's beautiful. Okay. Who are we, uh, who are we with right now? Let's see. Um, I'm hearing a little hummingbird. Do you hear it? That's a hummingbird, and it sounds like a... 
Hold on, I want to make some. I gotta just make sure that one of the cats doesn't have a bird. At this point, there would be nothing I could do, but my landlord's cat catches birds all the time. God, I hope not. Oh, look, you guys. Oh my gosh. We have a nest. We have a nest. Maybe that's what I heard was the baby birds. That's what I heard the mama was feeding the baby birds. Oh, new beginnings. That's what I heard. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, that was a really, really good message. Not to mention we had to come out and see this. Look, look at the lake. Oh, that's what I heard. I heard baby birds being fed. And that's really, really good because that's a message right now to me. You guys. You're the baby birds being fed by spirit. Me too, right? Because these messages are for me. Oh my God, that's so exciting. Baby birds, new beginnings. Maybe there's a new love coming into your life. Oh, new beginnings. Ooh, raccoon. I saw the raccoon. Oh my gosh, my friend has a raccoon. He rescued a raccoon. I shared it. Oh, I didn't share it on my Facebook page because he didn't have a share thing, but I shared it on my Instagram. He rescued a baby. Him and his wife rescued a baby raccoon. They took this raccoon in. And uh, it's a little girl. And uh, he said it was a really tough picture. I'm going to show you guys. He said it was a really tough picture to share. He didn't, he didn't want to share it because he knew he, what he was doing is he was asking um, if anybody knew of uh, a place that would help, a rescue place. Because where he lives, um, they don't have, let's see, they, they don't care for raccoons. And I'm saying, keep it. I would keep it. I have, I know people that have raccoons as pets, but he said he didn't think he, he's, he, he's gone a lot and he doesn't think he would be able to, um, he would be able to care for it. But look, wait, oh, that's not the right one. Oh, but this is me. The truth about introverts. Oh, have you ever seen that? Oh my God. Okay. Hold on. How did I hit that? I hit the wrong one. There we go. Look, isn't that the cutest ever? Isn't he sweet? Isn't that cute? And everyone's making fun of his big long beard. And how, is that is is that the baby's nest? Look how sweet she is. And I and I looked up on Instagram. I, this is what I sent him. These people have a raccoon. And look at the cat. The cat's like, what the hell? Why is this raccoon here in our house? I get this message. Somebody else has brought in um, a little masked bandit, and they're not happy. Interesting. Um, so basically, the raccoon. Now, and this is what the people were talking about when they were. Um, they were telling my friend of, you know, about all the different things, you know, asking him questions about the raccoon and, you know, do they pick things up with, you know, have you ever seen the little, the little raccoons that they eat, they eat um, grapes, they love grapes. Um, this is, was he, is he as snuggly as he looks? What does he eat? Is he soft? Tell me all of the things. Does he nest in your beard? Um, <laughs> um, I, I want answers. Um, you know, I deserve something. What have they been eating? Are they cute when they, is she cute when she eats? Does she use her little, her little hand, her paws in cute ways? Um, soft, so basically, oh my God, it's so cute. They do, they have nimble little hands. They're very, very, de the dexterity they have is amazing. They're very clever. People call them trash pandas. I love them. I love raccoons. So basically, the rat, the rat's what the raccoon is telling you. You have all the resources you need. They're able to find things, right? They get into the garbage. They, they're, they find things and they use things. They're smart. These little bandits. So they're telling you, you've got everything you need to do whatever it is that you need to do. You've got all the resources. A lot of times we don't realize what we have at our disposal, right? We, we think that we need to have more than, than what we have, but it's not the truth. And Spirit's telling you right now, it isn't the truth. Right now, you've got what you need, you know? So, and, and when you don't, maybe you'll have to dig around like the raccoons. They're trash pandas. They've got to dig around to find stuff, right? So you might need to dig around to see, you know, get what you need. But you're going to find it. So stop stressing. Stop worrying about it. And, and, and stop creating drama is what they're saying. Stop being a drama baby. I watched a cat yesterday. I'm laughing. The cat was on a leash and, and uh, they wanted to take the cat out. And they said, here's drama for you. And the cat literally flopped on its side like, oh, I'm going to die. Which is what my cats did. So they're basically telling you, stop being a drama queen. You know, you got enough. Don't worry that you're running out of money. Don't worry that you, you can't find the job. Don't worry. Whatever it is, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Spirit is telling you this. This is your reason. Uh, this is your message. This is for, um, who are this? Is? So it went fire, water, air. We're in air. Is that where we're at? Stop being a drama queen. <laughs> 
and it might not be obvious at first where you're look, you know, where you need to um, get what you want. You're looking for something, and and but sometimes if you double back, a lot of times spirit says go back to the beginning. Sometimes if you double back and you poke around, it'll 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 pop up. And if you follow your intuition, you'd be surprised. I I'll ask questions like, okay, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And you know, please help me find it, spirit. And then I get a thought, you know, go here. Have I already looked there? But I go there, and oh my God, there it was. It was under the other pillow. So follow your intuition. Um, and don't get pissed off if it doesn't work. If you don't find what you need right away, like I'm continually, I'm still looking for my my turquoise ring. I know it's in this house. I know it is. I'm gonna find it eventually. I'm gonna find it when I when I'm supposed to wear it because right now apparently I need to hold on to this lip, this uh, lapis lazuli cat. Although I want to freaking chuck it and put on my turquoise. Apparently at this time I need to hold on to that cat. But when I'm able to, I will find that. I know I will. So spirit says. You know, don't don't get hysterical. Don't become dramatic. Don't blindly start right, reaching out and striking and doing stupid things because you're you're afraid, right? Don't take a really bad job because you're panicking. When spirit says, "Don't worry, it's almost here. It's going to be there. You're going to get it." Trust in spirit. You you what you want is you want to hold out for what what it is that you actually want. What's in your highest good? Now, when spirit will tell you, you know, if you have to transition from one thing to another, take this and multitask. You know, maybe work this job and that. That's fine if that's what Spirit tells you to do. But if they're telling you you've got what you need right now, that is what they're telling you. You have all the resources you need. You can trust this. Do not proceed blindly because you're anxious or because you're scared. You're not going to be able to hear your intuition when you're paranoid. And you're going to get paranoid when you're smoking pot and you're totally high. Sorry, that's what Spirit's telling you. Stop smoking the herb and start drinking wheatgrass and get your mind tuned in to what you need to do. Relax. What you need is going to show up. And when you think about the raccoon, the raccoon is a bandit. He's stealthy. Every time I go for my power walks, I go past the, um, the little travel trailers, and the name of them are stealth. I think about it all the time. Using your, your, clever, you know, your clever wit. Using your ingenuity. Using the dexterity that you have available to you. You can do this. You can do this. Look at the color yellow. I can do anything I set my mind to. Silence, right? Because if you're trying to figure something out, <clears throat> you need to silence your monkey mind. You need to be in a place of silence. I just posted something this morning, um, an article. I wrote it, and it was called <sighs> The Shadow Master. I'll read it to you guys. This is what I gave. Look at this guy. You think he's anxious? Yes, he he's freaking out. Okay. He might be in a, going into a place of depression. So what I said was The Dark Night of the Soul is actually something that we will enter many times within our lives. It's a place of deep confusion, overwhelming sadness and doubt. This is clearly not something we want to experience, and yet we must in order to look at the shadows that have arisen for us to heal. This is a place we will even enter after we, have, we are well into our ascension. Never feel that you have fallen off your path because you have entered once again into this place. This is a time of deep reflection and readjusting and realigning ourselves. A time of looking into our own shadows. What do we really believe? We may be questioning what our friends have said about us. Is it true what they say? Is this something I need to look at? Are the things I'm curious about, curious about unacceptable? Does this make me dirty, unspiritual? Why am I thinking these things? Why am I drawn to looking into things that I've never felt were acceptable? Is it okay to become the king or queen of swords and start slicing people out of my life? Is it okay to speak my truth? <laughs> because basically I'm not in the mood to put up with anyone's bullshit? Yes! We must honor ourselves and while in, the, while in this place, in this space, we must be gentle with ourselves like this, giving ourselves plenty of self-care, time, quiet, and love. Ask our families and friends for time to be in quiet. Make certain to make the time for this for yourselves. I gotta, put, I gotta fix this, ourselves. Connect as much as possible with nature and pay close attention to the animal messengers who come into your physical arena and call upon their wisdom and power to help you. Thinking about that mother, that mother, all I heard, I heard that high-pitched noise and I was worried. Okay, you know what it is? It's a barn swallow. Oh my God, it's a barn swallow. That's the nest that we have there. We have a barn swallow nest. Oh my God, so there's your totem messenger. The barn swallow is a harbinger of hope. Look up the barn swallow. This is your messenger. The baby birds, what did they do? They were hungry. They were crying, mommy, mommy, mommy. So you need help? Call on spirit, right? Call on your animal messengers. Connect as, as much as possible with this physical nature and pay a close attention to these ones that come. 
call upon their wisdom and power to help you, which is just what happened. The baby birds, those baby birds, those barn swallows are calling upon the power of the barn swallow. That is your messenger at this moment. And they have wisdom that can help you. Also, call in your spiritual team, which includes your angels, your soul family, and the entire collective of our spiritual family. Because we are all connected in spirit, all of us. Hold on, i got to turn my volume down so I'm not disturbed. That's another minute. Turn your volume down so you're not disturbed. Turn off your phone. Go away from your computer. Go away from your toxic friends or the people around you or even just anyone. Get quiet, right? we got to honor ourselves when we're in this place. So, where was I? We can rest assured we will most likely emerge from this difficult time with valuable nuggets of wisdom that we have gleaned from the process. We will no doubt recognize the inner strength we truly do have and have some valuable tools that we can now put in our own spiritual tool belt for us for use in our future life. In the end, though we have cried many tears, this entire process we have undergone has been in fact invaluable and in our highest good. So that's what this lion, you know, it's interesting. This lion has blue eyes, I think. My eyes are blue. So this is me, right? This is what I've been through. So I'm speaking for myself, but I'm speaking also for you guys. And that's what you're doing. And what is she doing? She's holding on to her crystal globe. Oh, use, use what I said. Use the crystals. Hold on to the crystals that you need. Hold on to your lipidolite to calm you down, to find yourself a place, be in a place of peace when you can't you don't want to use pot. No, you don't. You don't want to use drugs. You want to use nature. Nature. Look at the trees outside. Get in, see her crown? She's able to connect with spirit when she holds on to the crystals, when she's in a place of quiet, when she's in nature. She's not sitting there smoking a doobie. She's not drinking. Okay? Be still. A daily practice of silence bears gifts. A heightened sensitivity to beauty, deep inner peace, and a profound, and a profound feeling of connectedness to all living things. You know, what's interesting to me is from this distance, when I look, I see a horse. I know it's not, but I see the image of a horse with their head down saying, it's okay. You can, rele you can lean on us. See the solid brick wall she's leaning on? But the horse is saying, you can lean on us. You don't have to do everything yourself. We will assist you. When the horse comes forward, and even just in visual, the horse says, we will carry you. You don't need to do this on your own. You can climb on our back, spirit says. And we will assist you. It's also about forward movement. Forward movement is only going to happen if you can come into this place of stillness. I almost called this post, instead of calling it, what did I call it? The Shadow Master? I, almost, I was going to say in here, and I think I might add it to it, that a true master finds peace amidst chaos. Right? So your life may not be a peaceful place. You may be in a, a very dark night of the soul. But you can find peace. That's a true master. I called it the shadow master. It's time to let it go. Whatever it is, it's time to let it go. Forget it. What you've been holding on to, what you've been waiting to change, it's time to let it go. It's time to let it go. What else has, has been this message here? This. You've been trying to figure it out. You're, you're panicking. You're stressing out. It's time to let it go. Or something that you were hoping was going to come your way, it's time to let it go. It's not going to happen. This little trash panda, have you been the one that's been in somebody else's house where you shouldn't be moving in on somebody? Are you the one that I watched in my dreams? You're never going to have it. It's time to let it go. Could be this little, this wild one, right? It's time to let it go into nature. Let it be wild. There's so many messages. You know what it means to you. The message is straight up and it's very clear. It's time to let it go. At 53 minutes and 53 seconds in, <laughs> we go to our last. Our last. Now what is it? Okay, so what do we have? We've had hummingbird. We've had creativity. We've had the heart. Where's the last one? Where did it go? It's harmony, but I lost it. Oh, it's right in front of it. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It's harmony, and I thought I lost it, but I didn't. It's right in front of me. That's your message, first message. Second message, 5353. So we're going to talk about what 53 means. I know it's going to be about changes in the Ascended Masters. Um, 53. The Ascended Masters are helping you change your life in positive ways. Ask for their help. With any aspect of these situations, such as additional ideas, opportunities, courage, and so forth. Okay? 
So you thought you lost your harmony, but you didn't. So this is for the last messenger would be Earth, right? If I messed it up and I didn't start with fire, because I did, I, I, I'm pretty sure I started with fire because I was the hummingbird. If not, don't, don't listen to me. Do what I said at the beginning. Don't go, Sherry, that's not what it was. You know what you're doing. Revelation. Ooh, okay. Well, I've had things revealed to me. So this deck that you're, we're working with here, this the, the people who chose Revelation, where did Harmony go? We want to have Harmony here in front of this. We need Harmony. Oh, that one's spinning, spinning. Okay, so it's interesting. When I look at that, I always see big lips in the front of that. I wonder why. Because you think about Revelation, somebody speaking something, right? I just see big lips. <laughs> and then I, and the next thing I see now is a big giant ruby. We spoke about ruby and um, the, what is it? Ruby and the sapphire, both being the two hardest crystals next to the diamond. So the Revelation now I'm seeing a cushion. I'm seeing a really beautiful cushion. A silk cushion. This is like a stool and there's a cushion. See the light coming from behind? Some, there's going to be light coming on something. Illumination. Something's going to be illuminated to you. So in Revelation, and I keep seeing, oh, there's another messenger. Come on, don't go away. It's a pair of mocking jays. Ooh, look at them. Ooh, were they doing a dance or were they arguing? Hmm, mocking jays. Interesting. Mockingjay was our messenger yesterday. That was actually very pretty. I hope I can catch a picture off of this um, off of this video of that. That was beautiful. So in Revelation, what they're telling you, Spirit's telling you is, if you do go to this place of silence, because these are all kind of going together, right? For people who choose all the messages, like I do. If you go into this place of silence, you're going to find the answer that you're looking for. Spirit wants you to sit quietly on that beautiful silk cushion and bring your focus within and go into a state of meditation. Now, you don't have to be sitting on that cushion. You can be sitting outside. I would prefer to be out here, right? Because then I see my animal messengers. Go where you feel drawn to go. And pay attention to what you're feeling. It's always about what you're feeling, not what you're thinking. Because we want to silence our monkey mind, right? So focus on our breath. What is it that we feel? Because the answer comes within your heart. It comes within your feelings. Whatever it is that you're going through, there's a lot of stress happening here. There's a lot of uh, uh, hot, like when I watched those two birds, I don't know if they were fighting or if they were dancing. They need to come into harmony. So they may not know, this was spinning, right? So maybe your head is spinning. You don't know whether you're fighting or whether you're dancing. That's the message that I'm getting. So maybe the, the situation that you're in is, is creating um, this feeling of chaos because this passion, this can be anger as well. You don't know what the hell it is. What is going on? What do they feel? What do I feel? You know, who knows what's happening in your life? It's creating anxiety. <clears throat> and stress because those birds were kind of going at it and this this lapidolite was spinning and we want harmony so as human beings we want to make sense of stuff and a lot of times we can't make logical sense of things because a lot of times things aren't logical they're spiritual why must i do this why why do i feel this way like like i wrote about in the um in the shadow master the thoughts that i'm feeling you know you're looking into your shadows you're questioning things is it true what my friends are saying about me? Is it true? Is it something I need to look at? The things that I've been looking at, that I've been curious, does that make me a bad person? Does it make me dirty? What, what, you, you're, you're, you've got to think about these things. There's chaos in your life. Why am I drawn into looking at things that before I wouldn't look at? I'm wondering why I'm watching that in my dreams. I, would, I don't look at things like that I've been watching, but somebody in my life clearly is looking into things. that, I, And why are they doing that? So... Is it okay to start slicing people out of my life, being the king or queen of swords? Because the king or queen of swords, they don't take any shit. They stand in their honor, right? But they're truthful and they cut away what doesn't work. And they, and they sometimes bring down that sword pretty hard. So we may try and want to try and figure things out logically, but we can't figure things out logically. So spirit wants us to figure things out by our feelings. And when we try and, like with me, with what I was watching, I was getting so confused with what everything I was watching. I was getting angry. I was getting very angry. I, I was starting to wanting to slice people out of my life because of what I didn't understand. And then I thought, no, this is ridiculous. It's making me feel bad. And if it makes me feel bad, I don't want it. I want harmony. So I detached from it. I brought myself to a place of peace. So that's what spirit's wanting you to do. Take yourself to a space of peace. Don't try and figure this out logically. It's only going to confuse you. Trust the guidance that comes from your feelings 
and also that spirit brings clearly to you. Everything's unfolding as it's meant to unfold. Everything is going to fall into my in, in, into um, into a space of harmony and peace of mind. They're giving you a time frame. Over the next two months, it will all fall together in harmony. Over the next two months, I like time frames. I'm sick of being told in the future, but that's just the way it seems to be. So now just because, and there we go, there we go again, illumination. We're going to have illumination. Look at this one. And look at, where is she? In nature. That's where you're going to find your illumination, in the trees, in nature, not in the city, not around your friends nattering in your ear, not at the club, not smoking pot, not sitting at a party drinking. Oh my God, I'm so excited about the barn swallow. I'm, I, we're going we're gonna to look this up for you guys because they're, they're, there's the mom and dad that are going up there, both of them. I'm watching them. Super excited. Gosh, we've got a barn. Wait till I tell my landlord. He'll be so excited. He doesn't try and rip things off. We've got a, we've got a little nest down on our dock too. Oh God, we have new beginnings everywhere. But those babies are born. I heard them. Oh my God. So the barn swallow. It talks about the the the, the um the play about pl about playful summer, right? About the sun rays. Look at the rays coming through these trees. Oh my God. In my dream, I said to my twin, "Can we have a clearing? You know, so the sun can come through because it was too dark." He said there was a lot of birch trees and it was very very dense and it needed to be seventy two degrees for the plants to grow. And I said, "Yeah, but can there be a clearing, an opening where the sun can come through?" Because you need that. And the barn swallow is just talking about that. The rays of playful summer. And it talks about showering your home with lots of love. That protects your home. Oh, I love it. The barn swallow. The barn swallow. So which? So let's go to sun signs. There's so many messengers that you, you I mean, places that you can look up. Um, to find the barn swallow. I mean, to find your animal totem messengers. It talks about summertime. You know, the, 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 the swallows come back to San Juan Capistrano in the summer. San Juan Capistrano is right over the hill from where I live. 45 minutes straight over the Ortega Highways. It's beautiful. I love San Juan Capistrano. Um, Ladera Ranch is there too. My twin used to live there. Um, so the barn swallow talks about luck, happiness. I don't believe in luck. We make our own luck. So it's good fortune. Love, happiness, protection, summer, joyful, peaceful, fidelity, graceful, ingenuity, Remember, we we're talking about ingenuity. Um, it's the symbol of Venus as well. Um, they associate Aphrodite with this bird. You know, Aphrodite, the goddess of love. So it's the beginning of spring, but they come back in this um, when they're there. When they're there in full, it's summertime, the beginning of summer. So it talks about spreading love in the air, um, prosperity, fidelity. Um, so it talks about what do you think about? You, know, you got to think about infidelity. What does it mean to you? Do you want to be involved in that? Hell no. Um, if the bird has come to nest its home near you, come to your home and build its nest there, good things will come to you. Yay! <laughs> Yay! The Germans actually believe that it would be, it's a protector and it would stop fires from burning their home, destroying their home. You think about your home, your physical home. We just talk about this, right? When things are chaotic and, and things are on fire, it's a protection. It's a protection. There will be harmony. There's going to be illumination for you. The barn swallow is bringing you illumination. Um, it's saying that you need to pay close attention to what people are saying about you. People talking about you behind your back or what are they saying? It could be that you're talking too much and you need to listen. Listen to what they're saying. Now, isn't that what the shadow master said? Is it true what my friends are saying about me? Do I need to listen? According to barn swallow, yes. It's about communication within relationships. Maybe you need to listen to what somebody has to say. It's about using your thoughts to bring about change and bring your thoughts into reality. Um, it, it helps you to act in a classy manner, you know, not to react inappropriately. We don't want to be the reaction. We want to be the action. Are you the action or the reaction? No, we would like to respond, not react. That's why with me, when everything got all hot and bothered like this, I didn't want to be the, the emperor upside down, right? And I didn't want to be the queen of swords upside down. I don't mind being the queen of swords, you know, and speak my truth. But I didn't want to react. We wanted to come from a place of being classy. So you see this one, and Spirit is showing you. Walk through the gates. You know, when you get the 10-10 and 11-11, Spirit says, this is a gateway. Walk through it. 
I can't help but see that this is an open heart right here. Spend time in nature. God, this is like the, the, the sequoias. I want to go back there. Illumination. So believe in the power of grace. When we least expect it, a new door will open and the light of grace will illuminate our next step. Right when you don't expect it, harmony is going to happen, right? You know when it happens? When you stop fighting it. That's when it happens. And what's going to happen? A peaceful resolution. Okay, my whole body. Okay, please don't think I'm being inappropriate. I want to show you something. My body is covered in chills. Do you see them? My whole body. I'm sitting here in my little, my little thin little dress because it's so hot. So when my body has chills like that, we can't fake chills. You can't fake that. You know, you can fake tears, you can fake um, all kinds of expressions, but you can't fake chills. There will be harmony restored. There will be a peaceful resolution to what this, to this seeming chaos. And as Spirit said, ooh, I got it even stronger. Have you ever had chills like that, that are so hard they hurt your skin? Look at that. So hard they hurt my skin. You can't fake that. I'm not cold. I'm not cold. It's hot. This, this, this feeling of, I don't know what the hell's going on. This spinning around and around and this, like let me, you know, being so upset and I don't know, is it love? Is it anger? What the hell? Don't figure it out logically. You're just going to confuse yourself. There's going to be a peaceful resolution. You will get the illumination you need and all will come to a place of harmony. Yay. It's my favorite word, favorite place. Okay. At one hour and 20 and six minutes in, we're done. I'm going to go outside and, um, actually I'm not, I don't want to bother the, the mommy with her babies, but I'm going to go down to the dock and see about the, the, the nest and see if it's, if it's hatched its babies. So new beginnings are here. You guys, the birds are calling. I love it. And, and remember when those birds are calling, that's us. When we call out to spirit, spirit comes running like that mommy. She came flying and so did daddy. So we have who we need. Who's your daddy? <laughs> I love you guys.